Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you guys some Dollar Tree Farmhouse Christmas DIYs. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around. Don't forget to click that red subscribe button and then the bell and all that way you're notified every single time I upload. If this is the type of content that you like, I also do Dollar Tree hauls, thrift flips, and much more. And farmhouse decor is my specialty. So make sure to stick around. That way you don't miss another DIY moment or haul moment. So let's not waste any time and let's jump right in. Okay friends, so to start off our first project, I take four of these galvanized metal decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I take off all the hangers as well as I take my drill and I just flip them over and screw off that front decor piece. Once I had all of them down to the bare bones, I then just glue all of them together one on top of the other and I did leave one of them with the handle so that way um, I didn't have to re-add one at the top. However, if you would like to add something different or just have this stand alone, then you can take that one off as well. Now I just wanted to show you that I was kind of figuring out my options, seeing what type of lettering I wanted, and I ultimately decided on these letters from Walmart. They are only a dollar and some change a piece, and I pull out an N, an L, and an E, and I give them a good coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint around the edges as well as the front side. Now here... <laughs> I pick out the scrapbook paper that I absolutely loved and you guys if you have scrapbook paper and you're going to use that flip your letters over that way the scrapbook paper will go on the right side of your letter so I trace them all out I cut the end out and then I tried to put it on top and I was like oh my god Melissa what did you do mind you this was the only scrapbook paper in that print that I had I went through the rest of my stuff I didn't really like any of them and then I realized that I have a buffalo check chalk couture transfer once again chalk couture to the rescue so because this is such a big transfer it's much easier to cut it down so I did cut it down to three pieces leaving one of the pieces in a half the second piece a half of a half um, again so that it's much easier to work with and then I go in with my shimmer crimson chalk paste and I just chalk that right onto each of the letters now that is the beauty about chalk the beauty of chalk couture you guys i'm sorry i've been under the weather so please excuse me my voice and per usual i trip over my words but that's the beauty about chalk couture you can choose whatever color you like you can use the ink with this and make it permanent on shirts or whatever the case may be so like i said i just go in and i do the exact same thing to all three of the letters now generally you want to wash your transfer in between coats um, because sometimes it can get kind of stuck within the silk screen but because I didn't really care if this was a distressed coat of that buffalo check I didn't worry about it but if that's something that scares you definitely wash it in between and then I take this little wreath form I believe this is a grapevine wreath from Hobby Lobby and I bought this greenery it's this cr beautiful Christmas greenery from Goodwill a few weeks back and I kept it out especially for this video and I just clipped off some of the picks and then glued that down all the way around the wreath I then had these little decorative filler bags from Dollar Tree that are clearly for Christmas time. Why I found them now, I'll never know, but it must have just been meant to be. So I just dumped that out and go in randomly with some of the pieces and just glue them down to my liking.
Next, I go in with my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree, and I attempt to fill these holes, and then I realize... Okay, you guys, Miss Bella's right here with me. I then realize, okay, well, there's nothing in the back to hold this lightweight spackling in. So I did just flip it over, put a little bit of hot glue in the back, and then continue to fill the holes. Once the lightweight spackling was dry, then I go in with my sterling silver acrylic paint, and I just go over those spackle holes. Next, I take some Ink Waverly Chalk Paint and my mini chip brush, and I just distress this randomly. I wanted it to look like that dark galvanized metal, if that makes sense. I know I've seen it many places, um, but it's kind of hard to explain. It's like a darker galvanized metal that has like black around the edges and randomly um, on the galvanized sign. So that is the look I was going for. And then to make this look old and rustic, I went in with my Mod Podge and some cinnamon and randomly just faux rusted certain places. Now, as I always tell you guys, this is personal preference. I personally, for my home, like the rustic look, but if you don't like the rustic look, you can easily just take out some of these steps to make it look more modern farmhouse Christmas decor. But honestly, I feel like Christmas decor is very rustic, but that's just me personally. So, Next, I glue down all of the pieces. Now, you always want to glue your piece down to the metal if you can, because if you glue straight onto the metal, it dries super, super quick, and you most likely won't be able to lay it down before it dries. So, I did just want to add that little tip. And then, last but not least, once I have everything down, then I do glue a little tiny ribbon on it. Now, I was going to stop there, but once I was putting this together to take pictures, I realized how fun it would be to add some lights, so I just took a string of lights from Dollar Tree, I wrapped it around that wreath, I put a command strip on the battery pack and attached it to the back, and then look how amazing this is, you guys. It did not take me long at all. Anybody can do it. I know you can too, so let me know in the comments down below what you think of this project. So if you're new here, my name's Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget. So like I said in the beginning, if that's something that interests you, I would love to have you a part of my crafty family. I love each and every one of you so, so much. And you guys have given me such purpose and I have made the absolute best friends. So I always tell everybody, if I don't get anything else out of my channel, at least I will walk away with the most amazing friends. So my best friend, Natalie, she sent me a care package with some hair products. And she also sent me these amazing earrings. And on my channel, I like to show you guys my earrings of the week. I thought that it would just be a fun little thing to do that's a little bit different. And so she knew that I loved earrings and she knew that I loved like the macrame earrings. So she sent me these beautiful gray ones. I have a pair kind of like it from Walmart, but these are much bigger and more beautiful. Like you can tell that they're just better quality than the cheap Walmart ones. So thank you, Natalie, so much for not only being an amazing friend to me, but sending me that care package. So anyway, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Again, subscribe if you haven't already 
already tap that bell and all that way you're notified every single time I upload share it with your family and friends because all those things really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more and it also lets YouTube know what type of content you like that way they can suggest to you more content that you may like so with all that being said let's jump back into today's DIYs Moving on to the next project, I went to my computer and I printed off a tree and a few little deers. Now you can go to Google and pick whatever deers you like, but these are the ones that caught my eye and that I thought would look the best. If I can remember, I will do my best to leave free printables in the description box below. But I just take a piece of graphite paper and I trace on all of my animals as well as the tree onto a piece of foam board. I then took my hot knife and very easily cut these out. You guys, it did not take me long at all. This foam board cuts like butter with this hot knife. I highly, highly recommend it. With the small little detail areas, you just have to take your time and go around them. And over time of using this, you kind of, you kind of get the technique down to like a science. Um, but once I had them all cut out, it probably took me about 15 minutes to cut all of them out. I then go in with my mini zip sander and I sand off those edges as well as cut away some of those hard to reach edges. Next, I put a piece of parchment paper down. You guys, I know a lot of people use puppy pee pads, but I just can't. I can't. It really I don't know it grosses me out parchment paper looks much better and it's much easier to clean up um, and it doesn't give me the heebie-jeebies but this is the same exact technique that I used last week when I made those faux cutting boards so basically I just put blemishes in the foam board um, little knots with my fingernails I use a slew of different tools to um, puncture holes and just kind of make scratches because real wood is not perfect so I will leave that video in the cards in the right hand corner if you want me to go into a little bit more detail on this technique um, but basically you just kind of want to lay down your color so you're going to use the clear wax by Waverly antique wax and then whatever other colors you want so for this one I used the fawn and the antique wax I mixed it with the clear wax and then I started by just putting streaks on my foam board and then I let those dry because you kind of want to layer the colors and then once those were drying I went back to the tree because that was the first one that I did and I mixed up some of this green Waverly chalk paint I can't I believe it's called pine or I don't know don't quote me I know one of them is moss the lighter color but I mix up some of the wax and the green paint as well and basically do the exact same thing but this time i'm gonna drag my sponge over the streaks if that makes sense if that doesn't make sense you can see what i'm doing here but once i was done with the green then i went back in with the antique wax sponge i got into those knots and the blemishes really well just by kind of pressing down my sponge into them and then wiping off the excess with the end of my sponge where the dry part is and then i also also did use my quick dry tool to dry in between coats that way this looked more realistic I did the exact same technique with the trees as well as the deers. The only difference is the deers I only used the colors fawn and the antique wax. Now for the last step in this faux wood making process, I guess you can call it, is to take some ink Waverly chalk paint and that clear wax and just kind of highlight the edges and the knots once again to blend this all in and on real stained wood, the edges are much darker. So that is why you kind of go 
more heavy handed on the edges. But if you don't like that look, then you can totally skip that part. Now with my shimmer gold chalk paste, I go in and I highlight the deer's antlers, the sitting deer's heads, as well as the tree star. And a lot of people don't know that you can also paint with chalk paste. Now if you're doing bigger pieces, you have to water it down a little bit, but to do little highlights like I'm doing, you don't need to. And then on the bigger deer, I go in with my shimmer crimson and just give Mr. Rudolph a little red nose. Now to make the stand to this, I take two large stir sticks. Now I had already cut the handles off of these, but if you didn't already do that, cut the handles off. And then I glued them together with a large stir or large popsicle stick in the middle, as well as two cut pieces on the ends, and I just secured that with some hot glue. I then stained it with my homemade stain and gave it some highlights with some white Waverly chalk paint. I then go in and glue all my pieces down the way I liked. If you don't like this setup, then you can always change yours around to fit your decor needs. But I then just took that same greenery that I used in the last DIY. I took two of the pieces with some floral wire and kind of tied them together and then glued it down and last but not least I embellished it with some of that decorative filler in the middle and you guys I love the way this turned out I cannot wait to put this up for Christmas it gives me all those Christmas feels and even though I'm not ready for Christmas I'm definitely getting excited to DIY for it so let me know in the comments down below would you guys do this faux wood technique with these deers and tree or would you paint them let me know in the comments down below what you guys would do with these foam animals and tree Okay, beautiful people, it is that time again. I want to thank Judy and Jana for the craft supplies. If you guys enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out on my next video, follow the link in the description box below or you can type in these words in your search bar. But you guys don't have to support me monetarily. There's so many different ways to support your favorite creators, like watching the ads, clicking on the ads. You guys can give your favorite videos thumbs up you can share your favorite videos all those things help our channels to grow and help YouTube to notice us and watching the ads and clicking on them is how we get paid so again I appreciate every single one of you whichever way you choose to support me and I appreciate you guys more than you can know which is why I'm doing another giveaway one winner it ends August 6 at 11.59 p.m. It is a huge box of goodies with Dollar Tree items and more. There's like 40 items. It's around a $30 value. And all you have to do to enter is like this video. Comment your favorite movie in the comment section. Share it with somebody who you think would enjoy it. And then for a bonus entry, go to my link tree in the description box, which has all my links in it. Find the link to my VIP group. Join my VIP group for an extra entry. This giveaway is in no way associated with YouTube. And may the odds ever be in your favor. <laughs> Okay friends, moving on to the last project. I take two of these tag signs that I got last year at Christmas time from Dollar Tree and I start by taking off the hanger at the top as well as at the bottom there is this raised part where you see the joy and I just slide my uh, putty knife underneath and then pull that away from the sign. I then take my straight edge and take the stickers off you guys, sometimes I'm too lazy to pull out my hair dryer. <laughs> um, but once I had removed the stickers from both of the signs, I then go in with my zip sander and just sand off the rest of that sticker residue. Next, I give both of the tags a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint. And then once they were dry, 
I go in with that bigger piece of my buffalo check transfer and I lay that down on the, one of the tags and I transfer that on. Now the right hand side of this is going to be tucked under the other tag so I wasn't really too worried about getting the buffalo check all the way to the edge. However, if that bothers you, then all you would have to do is just flip over the transfer and then just transfer it on that side as well. Next, I take my seasonal welcome signs transfer. Now this you can cut up to get four different signs. So definitely a great deal. Two of them for Christmas and winter. Two of them for like fall and Halloween. So I love that about this one because you kind of get all the important seasons in one transfer. And then I pull out my welcome Christmas um, sign transfer and used my shimmer crimson my pesto white and my shimmer gold to transfer on this design and for my favorite part peeling and revealing oh my god you guys look how amazing this looks it's crisp it's clean and it is absolutely gorgeous so once I had my design transferred on then I glue these two tags together now I've seen these a lot I see them on Facebook all the time and I could not wait to try my hand at one so I just love the contrast between the pattern in the back and then the image on the front so let me know in the comments down below if you think that I chose a good color scheme but I take some more greenery and once again I took two pieces and attached them with some floral wire and then I glued them down to the top of the front tag. Once I had those glued down, then I took the bow that I made with some ribbon that I got last year at Walmart, and I just glued that bow down to the top middle of the greenery. <laughs> okay, you guys. Now, you guys know sometimes this is how the this is the way the cookie crumbles for me so i figured that this did not have enough on it it was missing something i couldn't really figure it out so i took these pit berries from dollar tree i detached the sign from the bottom sign and i just wrapped it i just wrapped those berries around the bottom three times i then reattached the sign to the back sign and I thought I was done. But of course, you guys know Melissa is super extra. And because I had just added lights to the other sign, I figured, shoot, why not? I can add lights to this one as well. So while it was attached, since I put the berries on it, there was a little gap at the bottom that I could slide these lights on. So I just slid them on at the bottom and then attached it attached the battery pack once again with a command strip to the back and that was it you guys look how amazing this is if i seen it in kirkland's or another high-end store i would totally pick this up so let me know in the comments down below does this look cheesy or would you pick it up in a high-end store as well
Okay, friends, so that is it for this video. That wraps up my Christmas in July. I am so happy that I did this this year. I love the way that each and every one of these projects turned out. Let me know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. Don't forget to enter the giveaway by um, entering, and I will leave all the... Uh, rules in the description box so that way I don't have to go through all that once again. Thank you guys so so much for being here. I am grateful for each and every one of you and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. Subscribe if you haven't already because we have a lot going on on this channel like giveaways like I said and so much more. So